Check, 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 check. Hello, my dear artists. This is Maria from Abissima. Today we have a very cool project that many of you asked me to create. I'm showing you here my latest experiments of uh, water-based colors, toilet paper, uh, varnish, pilot pen on watercolor paper. And this is what we are going to do today. Now let's see what materials we are going to use. You will need different sizes of brushes, watercolor paper, water. I'm also going to use board and I'm going to attach watercolor to this board. As board, I'm using regular canvas, watercolor, uh, watercolor paints. I'm going to use koi, metal watercolors and regular Korean set Munyo. Also, um, I'm going to create a frame with masking tape. I will probably use pilot pen and the toilet paper. Let's get going! C'est parti! I like using thick and heavy watercolor paper. The one I'm using is 400 gram. And um, the reason I like it this way is because it has a very nice texture and it's very uh, sturdy. Plus, um, there is less bending. Yes, as you can see, 400 series. Um, it bends less when I apply a lot of water. And um, I don't know, it just uh, feels right, it feels good. And when I attach uh, watercolor paper to the board, and as I mentioned, my board is an old canvas, I also create a frame. So as you can see, I'm trying to keep it very parallel to the edge. And um, I try to have same uh, same thickness for the board on each side. Perfect. My paper is ready. So the first step is super easy. Use any thick brush and cover your uh, paper with water. And now, while it's still wet, attach rectangles of toilet paper and uh, keep them wet. Apply another layer of water on top. And here is where you could start thinking and act creatively. You could cover a whole uh, watercolor paper with toilet paper, or you could use pieces and uh, overlap them and uh, leave some areas uncovered. And for more texture, you could create wrinkles. Wrinkles add some more interesting depth and uh, your visual will look more attractive and unique. And let's take a look again at what we are going to create. Many of you asked me to show how to um, create this, I don't know, foggy trees. Technically, there were two paintings with uh, flowers and the trees, and I asked you what you want. You said, I want trees. So about 80% of you wanted the trees. So this is my final result, and this is what we are going to do. Let's start with watercolors. And uh, these watercolors, I know they don't look very uh, appetizing. They are quite old. 
yes, I know I could have taken better care of them. So they're still good. These are this is a set of Korean watercolors uh, called Munyo, and I'm going to have a link underneath this video in case you are interested in purchasing them in Amazon store. If you don't have any watercolors, you could use uh, water-based colors like gouache, tempera, inks, uh, acrylic, and yes, I guess that covers pretty much uh, the water-based uh, water colors. So I'm starting with only two tones, a brown and uh, blue ultramarine. I really like this earthy look that um, only this tone, two tones give us and I hope you will enjoy this combination as much as I enjoy it. Hey, this is not only two tones that I'm going to use, I'm going to introduce different colors as well. But for now, these two are really great for the start. And as you can see, um, the toilet paper gives us a texture of uh, some abstract trees. Isn't it amazing? Also, according to um, the model painting, the layout that I've created earlier, I uh, had uh, darker tones on the top and lighter tones uh, at the bottom. I think this represents the foggy trees much more. And yes, as I promised, you can see now I also added some purple. Ooh. So now you know my process. I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. I don't want to bore you. As, you. as you can see, I just created a hole. It's because I was pressing too hard. So when you, I mean, it's not a disaster. It's okay for me, it, it's okay with me. But uh, still be very gentle because, you know, the toilet paper is very delicate. And uh, if you press too hard, then, you know, you can penetrate it and then maybe you are going to lose your uh, tree look. Are you ready for some magic? Let's add some really, really beautiful and attractive light gaps between abstract branches while everything is still wet. If for some reason your work started to get dry, you can lightly um, add some water with the brush or to spray some water on it. Not too much. So, the light gaps. Light gaps will add um, a mystery, a foggy look. And the best way to do it is to use any water-based metal color. It could be acrylic, could be watercolors, but my choice is Koi watercolors. It has a beautiful set of different uh, metal uh, pigments and uh, not necessarily silver or white. It could be gold or like a light blue, but um, I'm going to mix regular yellow and uh, a silver, uh, silver metal watercolors. Very important point to mention is that our aim is not to create photographic semblance. We just want to add a few accents here and there, but keep in mind that this artwork is absolutely abstract. Okay, we just want to create some kind of like a feel of the trees, okay, but not a real trees. It's not a photograph, it's art. Okay, so yeah, I'm showing you here white, um, white pigment. Sorry, I'm recording my voice after I've recorded the video, so sometimes uh, I surprise myself. Anyway, so you could also use just a regular white pigment. It could be gouache, it could be watercolor, it could be um, any other water-based colors. Maybe you just don't like metallic look, so then you have a good, uh, good alternative. So back to my point, no need to uh, try and achieve a photographic uh, look. It's an abstract and everything is kind of like blurry and fuzzy. So just let yourself, you know, go with the flow. You could create your uh, light gaps, not necessarily just with white or silver. You could 
uh, mix colors. You could mix, for example, uh, orange and yellow and silver all together. Just experiment, okay? And um, and keep in mind that when your artwork is going to be dry, it's going to look a little different than uh, this beautiful wet look. But don't worry, we will bring back the wet look with varnish and I'm going to talk about this later. So for now, just enjoy creating your um, uh, light gaps. Koi watercolors are absolutely magical. I'm also going to add a link to the Amazon store in case you want to purchase it. I strongly recommend to give it a try because they are just fantastic. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but the gaps are uh, easier to add with a thinner brush. So experiment with different light tones and see what works the best for you. And I'm also going to speed up the video because you know my process and um, yeah, if something I didn't mention, if something I, that I forgot to say, just give me a shout in the comments, ask me questions and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And also, as you can see, I have my uh, colorful, uh, my colors, my set of colors on the right so you know exactly uh, what I'm using and where. I also wanted to say that um, wrinkles that are created in toilet paper are giving you a clue or um, a hint uh, what is branch and what is a light gap. So um, all these wrinkles are, let's say these are branches and everything else in between are uh, areas for the light gap. Of course, you don't have to follow this precisely, but um, you know, just kind of um, do it according to your artistic taste, okay? And play, don't try to copy me play with this even if your work is not going to look like mine even if you're not going to be happy with your first attempt you could try another attempt this is why we are uh, learning right so more ex more experiments meaning more experience more experience meaning more understanding of um, what your creative inner voice wants to express okay so I'm not gonna go to all this artistic philosophy, but um, at the same time, I wanted to have a full creative freedom. So I'm just giving you an idea, but again, you don't have to follow my exact steps. And of course, don't be afraid to make mistakes. No mistakes, there are no mistakes in arts, okay? Only, um, only experience. Even if you have unsuccessful attempt, it means that you've learned something and experience is a most valuable thing. So enjoy! Now let's take a closer look of what I just created. It's all right. I think it's great. Again, don't be ex uh, don't expect that uh, this look is going to stay when your paper and the whole surface is dry. It's going to change. But um, so far, I'm quite uh, quite uh, satisfied with what I'm doing. 
So I'm done just adding a couple of last touches and now I want to put it aside and let it completely dry. Ta-da! What an awful artwork! This is so bad! No, it's actually not. We are going to bring back a wet look with varnish and it's going to look great again. And uh, I'm going to use um, the gloss varnish. It's acrylic varnish that becomes transparent when it dries. I'm going to use this lid to, um, yeah, to have some uh, varnish in it and I'm going to cover the whole thing. I'm going to do it with a thicker brush and um, gently of course, okay? I want it uh, I don't want to destroy my artwork because I've, I've gone already so far. So just with very um, like a light movements, gently apply good generous amount of varnish on top and uh, your colors are going to uh, look wet and bright again. I also wanted to say that uh, I chose to apply varnish not only on the water, um, what do you call it? Uh, yes, the, the paper, no, the toilet, yeah, the toilet paper, but everywhere, everywhere, including the flat areas, okay? And uh, something else I wanted to say, and I thought it's kind of cool, uh, give me a second, it's coming back to me, I hope. Yes, right this is an important point so uh, varnish also glues toilet paper to the watercolor paper it kind of seals it okay you will be able uh, to uh, use cloth wet cloth you know in order to take the dust away to wipe up the out the dust and uh, I think it's really really nice so um, I hope so far you are enjoying a progress a process and you like you like the process and you enjoy the progress or the opposite okay so let's see what we are going to do next but first let your varnish to dry it uh, of course um, it depends on how much you apply it but uh, even you apply if you apply it quite a lot I don't think it's going to take more than an hour but if it takes longer then uh, leave it maybe overnight all right, so everything is dry now and again it looks okay, but no worries, we are not done yet. We are continuing and we will add now smaller details and details of branches and here is what I, uh, here is a choice of uh, pens that I might be using. So there is a black pilot, I think it's 0.7 millimeters, it's pretty thin. There is also a white jelly roll uh, pen and there is a purple pilot. So I don't know which one I'm going to use, but as you can see, all these thin lines, all these uh, fine branches were created with this pen. Also, sometimes I used um, like a silverish, uh, silver, silver jelly pen. Again, it's up to you. Just um, uh, experiment with them but uh, the hint where to create branches is these uh, darker wrinkled parts so I'm going to start with a silver jelly pen and uh, see if it works well yes it works well so um, don't worry uh, you are not going to destroy surface as long as your uh, varnish is completely dry you can press with your pen and uh, now it's all nicely sealed but of course very important to make sure that varnish is completely dried 
okay so silver um, jelly pen adds a little bit but but more like uh, something in a in the background I like the look I'm going to add some black ones on top okay so again experiment it could be any color it could be any um, any pen or pencil that works on this surface and now let's see uh, what will happen if we add a black pilot so black pilot is really nice uh, it's uh, very very it creates really fine lines and um, you could make it blurry you know with your fingers if the branches are too dark or too obvious and uh, in case you don't remember how tree trunks and branches look you could use any reference or you can uh, totally uh, follow my design but always always keep in mind it's an abstract painting these are not real trees okay it's we're not creating photo so just follow your wrinkles here and there and it's okay if you touch your um, light gaps it's all good just enjoy the process and add little by little and uh, honestly I think it's very nice and very meditative process and suddenly your so-called abstract trees becoming visible okay enjoy As you see, I'm also drawing uh, branches on the flat part. I think it's a nice kind of a idea, but again, it, you don't have to follow my ideas. You could uh, keep your branches within the um, toilet paper, but um, but you can experiment. Okay, experimenting, as I mentioned before, is very important for developing your uh, unique creativity. Now at this point I'm almost uh, done I'm just adding some more uh, branches but keeping my video speeded up and um, and soon I'm going to take uh, out the frame that I've created with masking tape
Ta-da! And here comes my favorite part. Uh, when I take the masking tape out and I see my beautiful painting with the frame. Sometimes it's a little tricky and it's, yeah, it sticks too much, but um, and honestly, I'm, I'm doing it in a little sloppy way, but uh, I actually heard really good suggestion what to do so that your masking tape is not too sticky. You could warm it up with um, um, the hair dryer and uh, this will allow you to take it away you know in in a more easier way but I'm so impatient to see uh, the result so I'm not being very cautious but again for the learning purposes I think um, this is quite uh, quite clear and I do like uh, what was created I can I think I still will uh, add a couple of branches and maybe a couple of uh, branches that are sticking out of the toilet paper area but technically this is it Well, well, I think this is done. Let's take a look again at my uh, model. It's good, but this one's good too. They're different, but both very, very cool. I hope you enjoy enjoyed this whole process. So last thing to do is to add my signature. Maybe some, maybe also the date. Uh, no, not sure if I like it. Maybe I should just put my whole name. So, um, I'll use toilet paper to take it away, to take it out, and um, yeah, uh, well, let's uh, have it wet, yeah, so it's better now, and add my name and date, why not, it's an artistic achievement, isn't it? Alright, so let's write Maria, and then the date. So this is it. I'm done. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will ask me questions. Please don't be shy. Question can be in my Facebook group or under this video. If you are new to Abyssima, please check out. Yeah, now you know how this one was created, right? I think now you can really experiment and create whatever you like. Yeah, this one I think it was very successful. Done the lions. I think it's a great artwork too. Anyway, so please comment, ask me questions, join my group. All the information is under this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It was Maria from Abyssima and happy creating.